Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. We're gonna finally do a build. So I had an idea for a glide bait and I wanna do a glide bait that isn't just a stiff body. I wanna do a broken body uh, glide bait. And just to be clear, for me, a, a glide bait is a bait that actually, well, glides. So when you're retrieving it, when you're giving it twitches, it should glide in long arcs and not in quick turns. Ideally, I'll twitch it and it'll glide in a long arc to one side and then it'll glide in a long arc to the other side, ideally. Hopefully that's what it does. When you do a glide bait from a one piece rigid body, it tends to be really critical how symmetric it is along the length looking down, right? Both sides are exactly the same. And the weighting is really important as well. Otherwise you tend to get a glide bait either that goes to one side every time or just glide straight and never really turns. So to cheat the design a little bit, you can put a break in it or a couple of breaks in it. And you don't really want full movement, just a little bit of a break in the body so it tends to want to turn. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm modeling this body shape after a thread fin. So let's talk about the actual size. I want the lure to be five inches long. So just to save time, I've done this math already. So let's go ahead and figure out what this will be on my actual lure. It's four and three quarters, four and three quarters here is actually equal to 1.48 inches uh, and we'll just call that one and a half. So now we just need to decide where we want the cuts and I want the first one halfway back and then the next one I want halfway between the back and that first cut which is right there. So this will be a cut but instead of doing one of the typical hinge techniques, I'm going to do a web hinge, a continuous hinge. And I'm going to make it out of this stuff. This is a webbing that's made for HVAC, sort of supporting ducking up in your attic. Uh, it's real tough and it's got a lot of texture and that's really good for uh, getting this glued inside the body. So we'll have this web as our hinges. I don't want a whole lot of movement between them, but I want some. So there'll be a little bit of a gap and probably very little shaping. We're also going to need the distance to the wide point and we're going to need the relative location of the center line. And this I'm just going to be eyeballing a little bit uh, and I'm going to draw a line from where I believe that tie eye is going to be through the tail tie eye and I'm going to put a little hash mark right here at the wide point and this way I have an idea of the ratio of what's above this center line and what's below it. Okay I've worked out those numbers so now I just need to transfer this onto a piece of paper. I've got this sketched out more or less how I want it. I'll probably refine these lines just a little better and then I'll get this set up on our board. So for this build, I'm going to have to build the lure sort of as a sandwiched piece. So two very thin pieces of wood put together and I'm using some really uh, difficult to find kind of exotic wood. Nah, they're actually just uh, paint stirrers and they cost about zero. <laughs> if you walk up to just about any paint counter uh, and ask for one, they're free. The quality of these pieces of wood kind of vary pretty dramatically. You can take a look. You can see how very different those two grains are. This one's really tight. This one's really loose. You want to use the tighter grain. What I'll do to begin is to cut a small piece off of this one like this and do the measurements and the weighing to get the density of this piece of wood that's going to be critical later. So I've already worked out the density for the piece of wood I'm going to use and here's the little piece I cut out as a sample 
and the density is 0.58 grams per cubic centimeter. Let's cut. All right, let's glue these two together. And I've got to use a, an adhesive that allow me to pull it apart again. So I'm going to use this Elmer's uh, tape runner stuff. This is a kind of a two-sided clear tape. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it together. But I am going to pinch it down a little bit with this little micro clamp. To glue the template onto the wood, I'm using a little bit of this spray-on multi-purpose it's contact cement by Elmer's. So let's go to the bandsaw and just cut out the general shape. So I'm pretty happy with the shape, but I'm going to go ahead and clean up the cut lines just a little bit. Now I'll have to shape this lure completely, and I'm not going to use any kind of carve. I'm going to have to shape the taper from the nose to the tail, and usually that means running a center line or some guidelines down the edges. But since this lure is in two pieces, that line right there between those two pieces of wood will be perfect for guiding me. Okay, so let's take a look at the kind of shape I want to achieve when I start to shape this thing. First, let's look at the cross section. That's somewhere in the middle. And I want to have it wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. And what that should do for me is give me a lure that will wobble when it's dropping through the water column. That's really what I want. I hope for a little bit of flash with the finish and a good wobble as it's dropping. That's the basic shape I'm looking for. Now let's take a look at how it tapers along the length. We'll do it as a half hull model and that'll be the center line right there. Now I want to align the fattest part of the lure with the deepest part of the lure. I want that nose kind of blunt and I want a nice sort of rounded taper to the tail. Here I'm starting to sketch it in, and I can do that without any real templates because of that center line. It'll guide me pretty well, and I'll draw it on one side and then rotate the lure and copy it on the other. And then by frequently stopping and sighting down that center line, I can be pretty accurate with the symmetry on this taper. So that looks pretty good. And I'll be removing some material from the sides from tail to head but most of the material will be down towards the bottom along this edge right here. I'll have to remove a lot of material right there. All right, let's do it. So the first thing I'd like to do is to just round off the nose and give myself one side that I really like, and then I just copy it to the other. Tapering it from front to back is a little tricky, but with a little patience and taking your time, you can get it just right. Having those guidelines really helps. I like using the radial part of this belt sander to get those lower edges and those round sections. That's looking pretty good to me. There you go. You can see the taper from top to bottom and from end to end. It's looking pretty good. Now I need to take those edges off, the corners on the top and the corners on the bottom. And this is a little tricky. This is something I've been doing a long time and I've got a real touch for. It's real easy to take off too much, so you have to take your time and really sight down the center as often as you can. That's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that symmetry. I think we can move on. So after a little sanding, it's looking pretty nice. It's smooth and there's some pretty nice symmetry right down the middle on top. as well as on the bottom. Now it's time to put in the carving details. And you can see I'm hand sketching here because I really don't think on a lure this small it's worthwhile 
making templates. So I'll use the eye as sort of an anchor point to anchor my drawing from one side to the other. And I'll drill it through nice and square just so I have the eye in the same place on both sides. Then I'll drill in the eye sockets. That makes it easier to sort of gauge how far my lines are from the eye. And then just by flipping it over side to side, I can tell where to put my lines. And I'll use the lines that cross over the middle on the bottom and at the top as guide points. And this process can be a little bit challenging. And I'll be honest, I do a little erasing and uh, correcting along the way. But it's fun. And if you take your time, you can get it pretty close to perfect from side to side. I won't get too much into the carving process. It's pretty basic. You just score along the drawing lines and then slowly and carefully remove material. And you just keep repeating that until you got what you want. And then you do a little sanding. Here is the results of my carving attempt. <laughs> it's not too bad. Uh, I've done worse. So now I have to kind of make some uh, critical decisions here. I ended up making this body just a little more fared at the back. Uh, so there's not much meat back here. So I don't feel comfortable making two cuts. I'm going to make one cut and I'll do it right at the center point. So let's measure and cut. <laughs> I also decided to cut a little bit off the tail just so I can get the basic shape back to what I originally wanted. Okay, I'm going to take them to the sander and neaten them up just a little bit. Nothing really revealed how symmetric you made your shape uh, like cutting right down the middle and that's pretty good. Uh, I think that's all the wood I'm going to be taking off this so I think we can weigh 13.42 grams. Okay, let's do the quick calculation. Our density is 0.58 grams per cubic centimeter. 23 grams of weight that it's going to take to sink that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump that up to 24 grams. And that'll have to be the total weight of the lure and all the hardware and the weight inside. So let's go ahead and see what two number two hooks, two split rings, and then we'll add weight. I'd like it to come up to like right at 24. So there you go. 24.54. That's going to be all that we need to put inside. All right. So now comes the moment of truth here. I've got to pull these two halves apart and hopefully the glue will release. And with a little patience, you can let this thing come apart. And there it is. Okay, so here's the webbing I'm going to use for my continuous hinge. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it out the shape of the lure, even though I'm going to cut it much smaller afterwards. So I'm going to cut it out with a hot knife. There you go. Okay, so now I'm going to have to kind of etch this out just a little bit so uh, this will fit in there without being a, a problem. Plus, I want to be able to get plenty of two part epoxy in there. So that should fit in there perfectly and nice and flush. So I need to have a wire coming this way and down to here and I'm gonna have my belly hook right here and this is gonna be the tie-on eye so I've got to make a loop here and then I'll make a bend and make another one here all right there's one and that should do it 
let's put an eye on this. Alright, that should do it. Now I just gotta cut this tag end off. Right about like that. Alright, now I'm gonna groove this one. Align it here and groove this one. I'll have to do this on both sides. So, that was a bunch of work. Uh, getting the little tiny indentations in there for the weight, I now remember why I don't like making lures out of two half shells. We have to start assembling, so I've got some uh, two-part uh, 10 minute epoxy and hopefully this will work. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna glue these balls, these lead balls, into their sockets, and then it's just a matter of mixing this stuff, gluing the web in, putting the halves together, and hopefully everything aligns and uh, it comes out uh, looking halfway decent. Trying to get a little extra right where that uh, ribbon is going to go to give us plenty of time to work with this. Let me slide this on here. Make sure everything's aligned. All right. Now it's just a matter of giving it like 10, 15 minutes to set up uh, and we'll work with the rest of it. So let's update this to the as-built condition. We shortened it. Took one joint out. More like that. And I move the uh, belly eye a little bit further up. Stick this eye here and it'll have its own screw in. I'm gonna go ahead and put in just fibers. I'll shape this so it actually looks like a tail. And then here, I'm gonna do the same thing. And then I'll cut it and we'll put in one kind of long fiber. Let's finish off this assembly. I'll probably have to mix a little more. This doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Now it's just a matter of waiting for this thing to set up. So this has had a good long opportunity to uh, set up. I'm liking the way the, uh, the parts lined up. There's not much that I have to sand or correct. Before I end this video, I did want to cover the weight uh, placement. You saw the calculations. You know why I put that much weight in there. The location of the weight is a little bit of a guess, but in general, just rule of thumb for a glide bait, you want the glide bait weight, the center of gravity of the glide weight, to be forward of the center of drag. And on a body shape like this, you can assume that the center of drag is going to be one third of the way back or slightly farther back so having it uh, having most of the mass uh, this side of a line around here uh, pretty much guarantees that the the lure will glide more than sort of twitch and move erratically so the next step is going to be to put a quick clear coat on there a very thin one and then drop it in the water tank and make sure my calculations are right and then we can move on to painting adding the fins and getting it in the lake and for you guys who are still waiting for your winnings, <laughs> the uh, little frogs are done and I'm hoping to be able to get them all out next week. So thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. Take this stuff seriously and help others where you can. I'll catch you in the next video.